out about it. If you have any questions, find out about the new expansion. They're great sponsors to us here, and they really do help out. Well, I've lived in Luton pretty much my whole life. I became the MP in 2010. Mm -hmm. And um, of course I came in just as Labour was going to opposition. And we did quite well in Luton actually out of the 13 years of a Labour government. Mm -hmm. So a lot of investment and actually a lot of down payments for things that have been delivered in the last five or six years as well, such as the redevelopment of the railway station quarter and so on. Um, Luton has changed. It's become a harder place in lots of ways. We've gone backwards on housing, on education and on employment in some ways. And that's the challenge of this job, to try and make sure the next four or five years aren't as bad as the previous five. Well, I think uh, there have been uh, some new businesses coming into the town. Uh, there's the university, which has moved forward and expanded significantly. We are physically transforming uh, the landscape of the centre uh, of Luton. Uh, there's the exciting new proposals that are on the blocks at the moment of the relocation of Luton Town Football Club. So I think there's a lot of change taking place, a lot of energy. Um, and if you look at one indicator, house prices, Luton is likely to be amongst the uh, fastest rises in house prices over the next 10 to 15 years. That's an indication of the growth and the potential of the community. I think I'm just a concerned citizen uh, as much as anyone else. I bring to it, I suppose, an interest, an interest in uh, my living here for the last 31 years. I had all my children brought up here, went to school here. I've worked in Luton. I'm still here in Luton. So my interest is ongoing, and I want to make sure I play some part in the best of Luton in terms of peace and harmony. I happen to be a Christian pastor. And so that's very important to me that we get on well with one another and that the town is uh, a very happy place to live. Happy is a very strange word, uh, especially in modern society, because people believe you can't be happy. I don't believe that. Uh, one of the good things that makes people happy is getting on well with their neighbors. You know, they have a decent job. No one's trying to hurt, to hurt them or make life more difficult for them, rejecting them, turning them away, trying to and do them harm. So none of these things lend themselves to, to happiness. So a, a, a happy town is a peaceful town. A happy town is a prosperous town. And I like to think I bring something uh, along with others to making this happen. Luton's a fantastically located place. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, think about it. We've got an international airport. We've got um, the M1, the M25, just down the road. You can get to most places in the country really quickly and easily. It's one of the reasons why we have the airport here um, and that obviously brings challenges with it as well we've had people come from other countries who quite rightly have wanted to set up life here in Luton there's pressure on housing and employment but um, we just need to make sure that we're able to grow and that requires government help I'm afraid. I think Luton's a very positive place um, like all communities it's got challenges but I think there's a huge amount uh, of positive change taking place uh, the university is at the centre of that. Uh, we've invested significantly uh, in the Luton community over the last uh, few years, about £200 million. You can see the physical evidence of that within the university. Uh, and I think one of the really strong points about Luton is if you look at the progression from A-level or, or equivalent to university, Luton's amongst the top five communities in the country. And I think that's evidence of real, uh, a real work ethic and a real sense of aspiration and ambition in the community. It's a campaign that's set up to bring people together. When people sign up to something and you get a number of people signing up to the same cause, then they kind of have that feeling of being united. So 
um, if everybody has an understanding of what the campaign's about, it's a pledge to say essentially that people do get on well together and that we'll all respect each other. So that's what the campaign's essentially saying and so people are happy to sign up to it and we've got over 80,000 people already signed up to it and more people signing up every day. So I think it's a campaign that works really well but it obviously does need more promotion, more wider promotion to get people to understand it and to come together and be united um, within the campaign. I've been on it just under five years. Uh, I didn't really get on to become any, it just came out, out of interest because I heard about the campaign and someone invited me to attend a meeting. Because uh, it's not an organization, really. It's really a, a campaign. By that I mean, it's not like we have an office, we have staff, we have uh, procedures and policies, none of that. We have not any of that. Uh, it has grown a little bit because initially it was really around responding to uh, the, the noise that other people are making to cause difficulty in the town. And we thought maybe if we uh, try and counter that noise in a better way, it would serve a very good purpose, which is what we did. Uh, and so in, in many respects, uh, my involvement came because people knew I was interested uh, in the town. I've been involved in different aspects of the town. I was a governor in the schools uh, and other things, and people felt perhaps I could help. And then I got the privilege of, of becoming the chair of it. And I've been the chair of it for the last four years or so. And so I've, I've enjoyed, and I like to think that my contribution ongoing contribution uh, as help in some way. I mean, I'm not active in, actively involved day to day in in Harmony now. I was there right at the beginning. It emerged when the EDL started here in 2009. We had an awful year through 2009. And at the beginning of 2010, a number of us said, how do we move forward as a community? And uh, one of the officers in the council came to a number of us and said, I've got this idea and we launched Luton in Harmony at the beginning of 2010. And it needs all the time reinvigorating new life and so on, but actually it's a beautiful idea. It, when we say Luton in Harmony, we're, we're not hiding behind the fact everything's sweet and roses here. We're saying, look, we're a town that is in harmony and we're grow we have a growing harmony. I see it as a project. It, you know, we're, we're a laboratory for peace building. I think integration does exist, but I think uh, all of us in all communities constantly need to look at how we build bridges across communities so that people genuinely are integrated, that they work together, they live together, and they don't live in separate silos. So I think Luton is uh, integrated, but I think like all communities, it needs to do more to ensure that it happens more effectively. Okay, here's an example of um, what I believe is integration, or a couple of examples. I've been told about a, um, a cafe that's down in Berry Park. Now, the people that run the cafe are Muslim people, but the people that use the cafe are Polish. And they are very much integrated because what happened was that there's a period of time where the Muslim people were actually working in Poland. And so they understood and got used to their way of life, their way of living, and so coming back to this country, they then have that level of understanding of each other and they get on really well together. To me, that's an example of integration. If you go into the market, it, it is the halal meat stalls. Now, if you go to the halal meat stall, it's not Asian people that are at that stall. It's Afro-Caribbean people or African people. And the dialogue that goes across um, the stall holders and the people, is re it's really friendly, it's, um, they have a level of understanding, the storeholders refer to, you know, they'll speak to the, the people who are buying the stuff in a friendly, family orientated manner. That's them integrating because it's two different communities, people from different backgrounds who understand each other and have that sort of um, link between each other. So to me, those two are examples of integration within the town. There's probably more situations like that that, that happen, but um, those are the two that I can think of off the top of my head. I've been here 31 years. I don't mean integration that everybody, you know, do exactly everything that everybody does because you can't. No, the real world doesn't, no, nothing happens like that. But there's integration, you know, that we live amongst each other. I wouldn't necessarily use the word integration uh, because integration is a politicized word now. It means something in a different way to different people. What I'm, I mean by integration is that we coexist. We live in the same street, same town, go to the same school, go to the same shopping, shopping center, and we live. We talk to one another as decent human beings, and we get on. 
Now, if you have a tension, they're okay, and it leads to some problem, the police gets involved, the courts get involved, and they deal with it. But it doesn't mean the rest of us have to join in with one side or the other. So I don't believe we have that kind of problem, where we are uh, joining sides because of this because of this or that. We must live together. Now, people always pick sides. You know, I mean, I'll pick side with my, my brother over against another brother, because people are like that. Some people, you know, their children side with mom against dad. So that's normal. It doesn't necessarily it's right, but it's normal. But in terms of everyday living in town, no, I don't think we have any of those kind of tensions. But we, we you know, people go into different sh the same shops, buy the food, get, go about their business, and long may that continue. I think the biggest challenges are making sure that we can house our own people. Uh, so we've got to grow and expand uh, outside of our borders, frankly. Um, I think we've got big challenges in terms of employment. You know, think about Vauxhall, where my dad worked, and his dad before him it didn't just mean that people could come here and get a decent job. It also integrated waves of people that came from various different countries. And we don't have that in the same way that we're used to. But equally, there are really good opportunities. The expansion of the airport will transform. Uh, our finances will also mean that there are great, good graduate jobs to be had here. And the biggest challenge of all is making sure that good people that study here in Luton stay here in Luton. And that's what I'm trying to work on right now. I think Luton's got an enormous amount going for it. I think it's a place that's full of hard-working people. Uh, there's a strong sense of ambition and aspiration uh, and the town and the community is beginning to move forward. So I think there are real investment opportunities uh, for organisations from outside of Luton. You keep supporting your town, you keep showing solidarity in your town. It will make it a better place. We've already got 82% of people saying they get on well together. Let's make it 100%, you know, and then that will raise the profile of the town and also social media tweeting facebook all the social media elements that we use every time there's something negative put something positive it pushes the negativity down where it should be and raises the profile keep luton the positive side of luton at the top